Hey, what's going on? This is Lucas here. Welcome to my video. And today we're going to be talking about how to find the BPM of any song, instrumental, or loop, or drum break in Ableton. And we're not going to be using any third-party software to do this. I'm going to be teaching you how to do it just using your ears and doing it visually on the timeline. And this is a great skill to develop as a producer and an engineer. It applies to pretty much any software. It's just something that you'll develop over the course of your career. And it really helps you understand kind of the relationship um, between time and what you're seeing on the timeline in your DAW. So I'm super excited about this. So let me know if this is helpful. I'd love to get some feedback or whatever. So leave me some comments uh, and let me know what you think. So the first thing that you need is some type of instrumental or a beat or a drum group or whatever. So I've just imported a random instrumental that I made earlier this year. And uh, the, the first step to this, really, the, the only way that this works is we have to find a very clear downbeat and what I mean by downbeat is sort of where the loop starts, where the drums come in for me is the most obvious place to start because we want to have that lined up. When you bounce songs out of your DAW or if you're just downloading songs off of YouTube or wherever you get music, you will probably have like a little bit of silence or some kind of intro that'll make it really hard to figure out where it actually starts. So I'm going to show you my workaround for that. And you want to make sure this is unwarped. So turn off any warping, because we want this exactly like it is on the hard drive. So if I play this, you notice there's an intro, and the click is off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna take this start marker and move it, and you'll see it's dragging over here too. So here we can make fine edits. So we wanna start this and zoom all the way in and start it right when the drum comes in, because this is a very obvious downbeat where we can start counting the song from one. So here, if I started there, now we have. Now you want to count in your head. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly tap that tempo in. I have tap assigned to T. I think it's a little bit better than clicking. So we had like a one, two, three, four. So we guessed around 73. And now since we moved this to the transient. So the transient's where, well, roughly the transient, but we got it pretty close. So I just basically want this to, to come in where the kick starts, right? Like close enough. Um, so I can turn the click on and let's see how off it it sounds. Okay, so I can hear immediately, because I've done this quite a few times, that the click is slower relative to the beat. But when you're just starting out, it's actually easier to look at the grid. You can change the grid size by pressing Command-1 to make it finer, or Command-2 to make it larger. So we'll, we'll just leave it like this for now. Um, so if we look, so we know that the kick, is, the kick comes in on 1 and then on 2, and we see that this is early, right? So what we want to do is we want to make this faster so that the kicks slide that way so if i go if i make the if i make the bpm slower you'll see that the beat will be early and if i make the bpm faster the beat will be late so if i try to snap i'm looking at this kick right here on two if i want to snap that in it happens to be at 77 right so let's listen to that <laughs> So that sounds right on to me, and what you can do, or what you'll need to do, the first few times that you do this, it might not be so easy. And if you go later on, you can play it from like a later part of the beat and see if it's still on, because if, if, if it's slightly off, it would drag or rush like slightly throughout the whole beat, and then later, at, towards the end, it will be pretty far off. So let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> Okay, so this looks like it's it's at 77. And then what you can do is once you've lined that up, you can drag it back and get the intro back in. Uh, so I like to do that later. And now I've, I've kind of cut off any like little extra time that was here, like from bouncing or from YouTube or whatever. So you see that comes right on. But I don't like finding the BPM starting from the intro just because there's no drums. It's a little less obvious what the exact timing of things are. So I recommend really going to the beat. And now once we've done all that, so we found the tempo, it sounds good with the click, we have it all lined up. Now you can hit warp. So what warp will do 
is warp will. And uh, warping, it's a feature that's in every DAW. So in, in Pro Tools, it's called Elastic Audio. In Logic, it's called Vary Audio. Um, it's, it's always has a name kind of like that. So what it does is it, it, it makes the audio elastic. So I'll show you exactly what happens here. Now, if we change the BPM, the audio stays the same and we're slowing it down um, or speeding it up and it keeps, it retains the pitch and it retains pretty much everything about it. You can just change the speed. So I'll show you what that sounds like if we speed this up a lot. The audio conforms to whatever you're doing it, so you're warping it. And when you have this all set up correctly, you won't even need to manually go in and put in all these warp markers. We just All we had to do was just turn it on. I have it on complex because I like complex or complex pro for... Well, for, for most things, but for, for a whole instrumental, um, that's that. So now you can change the speed however you want. So this requires practice, but I think once you get good at this and once you once you develop your understanding of like how the timeline relates to, to audio and length and, and just how time and beats relate to each other and BPMs and all that in the DAW, regardless of whichever DAW you use, this applies to Pro Tools. Uh, it's actually even easier to do in Pro Tools. Uh, and logic and stuff like that, you won't really need like third party software like mix and key, and you won't need, really need to rely on the DAW like guessing what uh, BPM it's at because it's uh, never really right. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.